What's up guys? We are back. New York Muscle Radio, the number one muscle building, fat burning podcast on the planet. It's your host, Anthony Bevilacqua, alongside my co-host, Big Pete Kacharian. And today, we're going to be discussing why you shouldn't eat carbs and how they're going to make you fat. Well, at least that's what the bros say. We're going to talk about that today and uh, dissect that one a little bit. So, uh, Big Pete, what's been going on, man? How you doing? Another week Another in the books. Week, man. Another week in the books. And it's, uh, it's, it's getting close to summertime. We're sitting here. I got a nice summer sunshine on the left side of my face here. I can't wait to go outside and enjoy some, uh, some nice weather. I got to get my, my sun exposure as, the, as the, the, new, the new wave of people uh, promote. So you're going to go outside and just put your balls in the sun because apparently that's like the best way to, to that, raise your that testosterone. Type raise testosterone, that's to fix all the hormonal imbalances, all the psychological <laughs> issues. And it's funny, I'm, I'm joking about this stuff, but some people take that so seriously. I just, I say this all the time. Every time I've said that to anyone about that, that study that they did with it, guys actually put their balls in the sunlight mm -hmm. and then tested their testosterone levels. Who thought of that? Like who said, that. you know what? This is going to be a good idea, guys. Take that your pants, <laughs> pull that sack up yeah. toward the sun, and just enjoy. Like, that's who would that? That's a great question. I don't know. And what would happen if you got sunburned down there? That would be a big problem. <laughs> and then what dead. happens then? Is your testosterone triple, or does it, like, <laughs> does it tank? I, I don't know, man. I, I, who knows? Who knows? But, yeah, like you said, there's actually people who believe. Listen, is it, could it be true? Maybe, but I can't see that even, like, being remotely, like, well, it's not feasible, one. I mean, I guess it is if you have, like, a house, a private house, and yeah. no neighbor's window there. I know, yeah. But, like, who's going to do that? Yeah. I mean, my son runs around outside naked all the time, so his testosterone <laughs> yeah. must be through the roof. That but, must be it, yeah. But I don't know, man. I mean, just like you said, I, I, I don't know who thought that would be a really good idea. I don't know, but that's like a... It, it's an old thing, but it's coming back around again. Everything in the fitness industry tends to trend and come back around, come full circle. So, I'm so glad that you yeah. just brought that up. So I was looking at Lane Norton's story the other day on Instagram. Yesterday, actually. So I'm scrolling through. I, I kind of do one of those things where I'm like, you know when you're in one of those moods where like, oh, I'm just like trying to pass the time, so you just kind of go course. through Instagram and you're kind of clicking through. So he posted up a whole thing about training. So what he's saying in his post, I wish I could pull it up. It's probably gone now. But basically, like, you should be taking one or two hard sets mm -hmm. to failure during your workout. And, and instantly what I said to myself is, oh, everybody's starting to shift away from volume again. Yep. And now yep. it's going to shift into that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and it, it's it's making a shift too. Like when we talk about specifically like in the, in the bodybuilding industry, lean is more like general population these days. It used to be like hardcore into just the bodybuilding scene. But if we shift into the bodybuilding scene, like maybe – five ten years ago the, the volume wave kind of came around and everyone was talking about volume lean was it was one of the first ones to start promoting that um and now if we talk about just the bodybuilding industry after everybody went full volume mostly now i see this more in the uk bodybuilding scene they're like all low volume high intensity training over there like nobody trains volume it's almost like it's like a uk versus like a u.s thing at this point yeah, well, he's talked about volume in the post. That That's just the one thing that I'm pulling out of it. So I don't want to yeah. say that he said to just do that. Right, right. But it seems like that's kind of making oh, the circle back around. Definitely circling back around. And we're starting to see some of, more guys, some of the guys in the science-based community who are the ones that kind of put volume on the forefront starting to come back around and say, you know what? Uh, if we are taking more sets to failure, you don't need as much volume. And, you know, it always, like, like I said, it comes in waves. And it, it just circles over time. You know, we talked about this. We talked this a while ago, but... If you remember, like, I don't know, 2000, 2008, 2009, in the, in the bodybuilding community, there was, like, the hard gainer era. Maybe even before that. It might have even been earlier. Like, who talks yeah, about, like, hard gainer training anymore? Yeah, remember? Yeah, and then, it wasn't a thing. It used now to be, like, if you were natural, you should train, like, a hard gainer. Now, you know, or even a few years ago, if you're natural, you should train with a thousand sets. <laughs> you know? It, it's crazy how it shifts. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just, uh, like I said, it's just, I don't know. It's fitness. That's what it is, it and that's evolved. and that's why I think fad diets and fad diets, fad training styles, anything like that, they always come in and out because people always want that next, you know, popular thing. Whatever is popular, people want to follow. And I think I said this on like two or three podcasts ago, but you know what it is? It's just because people want to be different, especially on social media. So yeah. if everybody's touting volume, yeah. you have to be that one person that says, "No, no, no, right? You need to go train to failure. That's it." And then you'll have people who will gravitate toward that, and then other people say. 
look, that guy's getting a lot of traction. Oh, girl, he's getting a lot of traction. So maybe it is low volume. Right. I got to talk about that. And then mm -hmm. people start talking about that and whatever. And then you have us in the middle <laughs> yeah. who speak to no one, basically. We really are in the middle. And, yeah. uh, you know, just we are like trains on the track, man. Just steady and just going right. up. That's it. That's right. all we ever do is just steady yeah, and up, yeah. steady and up. And then we never change course. We never get veered off. It's just mm. steady incremental changes uh, over time. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's because of the fact of how we're so consistent with what we do. You know, a lot of people that, that hop from one bandwagon to the next, they're in and out of training. They're in and out of dieting. And, you know, they, they go through phases where they're on point when they're off course. And, you know, when you stay, like you said, you're just on track the whole time. You only make small changes as you progress and as you evolve. You know, because you're doing the same thing that's getting you results over time. Yeah. So, let's roll into it, man. Don't eat yeah. carbs. They're going to make you fat. That's yeah. what the bros will tell you. That's what the uh, all these other crazy diets will tell you. So, let's break this down. I'm kind of excited to talk about carbs today. Because uh, I'm kind of in the middle on carbs. I used to really think like carbs were really, really important to have. And then I kind of... Ah. Here he is. Ah. Ah. What do you have to say about carbs? What are you going to say about carbs, buddy? My son's here, guys. Come here. What do you say? Carbs or no carbs? Are you a carb guy? <laughs> are you, you are. You don't want to talk? I would tell everybody how you were naked all the time running around. You never wear clothes. You have them on now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> There's some carbs in the pantry if you want some. You go help yourself, all right? <laughs> So yeah, you're saying that you, at one point, you felt carbs were super important. Yeah, at one point, I feel like carbs were really, really important. Like, that was the thing, too. Especially when we were, like, competing way back when. Yeah. That was the thing. It was, like, who could have the, the highest carb intake was kind of, like, a thing. But now I'm kind of shifted to, like, I think you only need a certain amount of carbs per meals you have on a daily basis. And that's it. Like, I think, like, the, the max is probably, like, again, for guys our size, Probably like 75 grams of carbs, you know, four meals a day. That's probably enough carbs. You don't need any more than that. The rest can be filled with all protein and fat. I think that that's like a good like ratio because again, like at one point when we were really trying to push the carb intake and you know, you're trying to get 600 yeah. grams of carbs a day, you're doing like stupid, disgusting things. Like I, I'm drinking iced tea. Yeah. Like I'm having meals with like 150 grams of carbs. It's like, that's not necessary. Your body's not going to utilize all. I mean, it will, but you know what I mean? Like there's no reason to have yeah. 150 grams of carbs in one meal, you know, and yeah. then have it again three hours later or whatever it is. Yeah, it, it's all really gonna. It's there's so it, it's so context dependent. So I mean, while I agree with you, the numbers and the amounts are gonna be different for everybody depending on so many factors. You know, you said you're talking about guys our size. The the numbers and the ratios and and how often and stuff like that that we have carbs are gonna be fairly similar. But it's also going to depend on, you know, like I said, there's, there's an individual difference and then it's going to depend on the goals as well, obviously. Obviously, there's going to be a difference if you're cutting, if you're trying to gain weight, or if you're just trying to maintain. You know, if you're trying to just maintain, then I agree with that 100%. In some cases, you know, if you're trying to gain weight, carbs can definitely be like your best friend. because I think fat is where it's at when you're really trying to put weight on, man, because it's easier macronutrient to eat. I mean, really, we think about it. It is. It you, is. Um, you, you have to, you know, you have to, again, it's context dependent. So it depends on your, your whole diet, how many calories you're getting in and what your, your protein, carbs, and fat ratio are. So, like, let's say, so in my example, I, I feel that, like, carbs would be a better option to add into your diet when trying to gain. If you're following a lower fat diet, adding in carbs are going to benefit you a little bit more because now you have to fill those calories in from somewhere. Getting in more protein than you need it's really just going to turn over into carbohydrates anyway. So there's no additional benefit at that point to adding in. Once your protein sources are maxed out. Now, fats, the one drawback they have, in my opinion, when you're trying to do something like that, if you're just trying to add an excess calories from fats, me personally, it definitely makes digestion a lot harder. So if I'm struggling to eat meals because I had so much fat in a day, it makes getting those calories in more difficult. So if I have something that's easily digestible, like carbohydrates, it allows me to get more calories in, does it benefit me more than if it was from a fat source, provided I could digest the food and get those calories in? Not necessarily. So now you're just kind of splitting hairs at that point, and it's more preference. But as long as you're filling in, you know, you have that, that protein requirement met, you fill in those calories with carbs and fats, I wouldn't say one is necessarily going to be better than the other. Yeah, I mean, again, like you said, it boils down to personal preference. But, you know, I think at some point, we've talked about this, you know, all fair a lot of times. Yeah. Like, 
five hundred grams of carbs is like the max somebody needs in a day, even if they're working yeah. super hard. Yeah. And then I, I agree. And then yeah, so then so what I like to do is I kind of like to keep my my fat low. When I say low, whatever the minimum requirement is for me to feel satiated, to you know have enough to fulfill any hormone requirements I have from the fat sources. For me, that's about like sixty grams of fat a day. Like that's the bare minimum. Then if I need to calorie bring calories in, I'll bring them higher. But what I like to do is kind of set that baseline. Then as I add calories in, do so from carbs. Max that out. Like you said, let's say you get up to 500, which is really, there's no need for me to go beyond 500. If I'm still needing to add more calories in, then I'll bring my fats up. That's kind yeah. of how I go about it. Yeah. So let's talk about the war on carbs, man. That's like a, a thing yeah. that's trending all over social media. The war on carbs. And people will tout about, you know, just having... Carnivore diet is basically one of them, just mm -hmm. basically kind of eating high protein, yeah. high fat, keeping the carbs as low as possible. Um, I don't think that's optimal. Either. Listen, the ground is always in the middle, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. The answer yeah. to everything always lies in the middle. Exactly. So there has to be a good balance of everything. There's no reason to not have carbs, you know, as many carbs as you <laughs> Like I said, there's definitely a threshold for everybody. Yeah. Everybody's a little different. Once you find that threshold, you know, then you're good. But balance is always going to be the best approach. I agree 100%. And, you know, like I said, the, the ratio and things like that, they're going to be a little bit different from person to person. So when you give, like, a blanket statement, like, carbs are what causes you to gain fat, it's a, it's a silly statement to make. Or the reason you're gaining weight is because of carbs. Again, it's going to be context-dependent. It's going to be person-dependent. So I don't recommend anybody follow the same diet plan that someone else is doing. So when you give a cookie-cutter plan, like, okay, only eat protein and fats, it might work for somebody, very small percentage of the population, where I, when I say work, it might be better than eating carbs for somebody. Again, in certain situations, it's not going to be the best for everybody. No one plan is going to be the best for everybody. Right. So mechanistically, what happens when you you consume carbohydrates? You know, people say like, oh, your insulin levels are going to spike, and that's true to extent with all the foods you eat. Your insulin levels do spike. Yeah. Carbs, it does spike a lot. And this is where people with type one diabetes, like my dad, you know, their pancreas doesn't work to control their insulin levels. So typically, why this came about was because people say all the time, well, when you have carbs, you're going to spike your sugar, and that's what's going to cause weight gain, because right. when your insulin levels are high like that, you know, that all that's going to get stored into body fat. Now, you got to remember, too, in a general sense, yes, if somebody just consumes table sugar, that definitely happens. But there's a lot of variables that will change that. Are you an active individual? Yeah. Do you weight train a couple times a week? You know, people forget one of the biggest ways to control insulin is by working out. Absolutely. Your muscles respond to insulin. You know, that's just one of the things that they do is they respond to insulin. So whenever you have, they, they work better to make insulin work better is what I mean. So when you start training, you start exercising, your body's going to absorb more of that insulin better. It makes it right. more efficient. Right. So people just take that one little snippet and just say, oh, you can't have carbs because it raises your insulin levels. Right. And people don't realize, too, that, you know, bodybuilders take insulin to grow muscle. You know, I'm talking about enhanced bodybuilders, right? So that tells you right there that insulin itself is very important for muscle That's so crazy itself. to me, man. It, it is. It's so my, da my dad's type 1 diabetic, mm -hmm. which basically means that his insulin doesn't work and he has to take insulin. Right. So my dad said, I told my dad once, I'm like, you know, people take this right. stuff, like, yeah. recreationally to, to gain yeah. muscle. He said to me... Are they crazy? He goes, if yeah. I give myself too much, I could be dead. Oh, yeah. It could kill you. Absolutely. So, uh, and, yeah. and he ha he needs that. And he's saying that. So can you imagine not needing it and then taking it? That's wild. Right. Yeah, I don't condone that. It's not like I'm recommending it, but it, it just... It sounds it, like you are, it's a, yeah. <laughs> It just <laughs> sounds like you are. It's a great example because... And the reason I, br I use that as an example is everybody that goes on about these new trends and fad diets, they like to use anecdote as the answer. So they say like, oh... Cavemen didn't eat like this, and look, they didn't have body fat, right? So we should eat like cavemen, or whatever it is. You know, when they talk about, like, remember the paleo diet? They said, oh, they didn't have all these issues, they, they ate these foods, right? Same thing, but, like, then these same guys will look at it and say, oh, you don't need to eat carbs to build muscle, but at the same time, you have pro bodybuilders taking insulin, who are the largest bodybuilders on the planet, right? But they don't want to look at that. Again, I'm not promoting that you take insulin, but I'm just saying when you eat carbohydrates, it raises insulin. And that's one of the main reasons that post-workout, pre-post-workout nutrition is Two of the best times of the day to consume your carbohydrates. Body's much more insulin sensitive. After you work out, those carbs are more likely to be stored in the muscle rather than the fat cells. You know, 
So it's all about utilizing these tools properly. So carbohydrates are a tool. It's a dietary tool. If you use them properly, you can use them to their advantage. If you use them improperly, sure, there's negatives to it. You eat too many carbs, you eat too many calories, of course you're going to gain fat. But if you eat the right amount and you do something like weight training, you know, you have a proper lifestyle, your, your body fat levels don't get out of control, those carbohydrates are going to be beneficial. So, again, you can't look at one thing and cherry pick and say, okay, carbs are bad because of this. So what's your thoughts on the whole war on carbs and what those people are touting about? Okay, you can't have any carbs, just eat meat, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's so you kind of have two schools of thought from, from people that promote, like, no-carb eating. One school of thought is, like you said, you know, they say the reason you're getting fat is because of insulin. So if you just remove your carbs, you can eat whatever you want. You don't have to count calories, this, that, and the other thing, and you won't get fat. That's the one argument, right? Then you have people on the other end of the spectrum who do follow that same low-carb approach, but they say... I understand that carbs don't inherently make you fat. It's too many calories. But if you remove carbs from your diet, you're less likely to overeat because carbs are very highly palatable foods. So if you remove them from the diet, um, you know, it just makes sticking to the diet easier. And because I can stick to the diet easier, I'm better off not having carbs. And that might be true to some extent. And I agree. I think there's some merit there. But at the same time, I could definitely overeat calories even if I don't eat carbs. Oh, yeah. You know, so for me, that wouldn't do anything. I would still have to track my food intake. But, again, if you're still isolating one part of the diet, you're not fixing the overall solution, which the overall solution is you're just eating too much food. If you do take carbs out of your diet and that helps you not eat so much food, great. But you should be able to still fit those carbs in. Like, there's nothing wrong with eating a small amount of carbs and cutting yourself off. You know, and that's the big thing I think people miss is they just need to understand how to control their, their eating habits better than re- restricting themselves. Because restriction is not what's going to solve the problem. It's, it's controlling and managing it that's going to solve the problem. So you were, you were talking about this earlier before. I mean, you said that um, now some of these carnivore people are recommending eating yeah. carnivore and apples. Well, yeah, what? that's like a new trend now, too. Like, So it's meat and apples? So this is the thing. Most, yeah, so it's pretty much <laughs> it's, meat it's, and apples. it's carnivore plus a little bit of fruit. I think that's what it is. A lot of these guys, and I'm not going to call out specific names because I don't know enough information to say that I'm 100% accurate with the statement, but if you just kind of go back and look, it, what I'm saying probably falls in line with the truth. A lot of these guys that do carnivore now originally were guys that were either vegans or followed some type of those diets before, so they went vegan and they told everybody vegan is the best way to live, it's the healthiest diet. Then they got small, they lost muscle mass, they got weak, they got sick, and they said, okay, I'm going to go keto. Then they went keto and they told everybody keto is the best diet. Then they went carnivore. Oh, you know what? I thought I had it right with keto, but carnivore is the answer. Now a lot of these guys are going, oh, carnivore was good, but you need carnivore plus fruit. Which I think, again, if we're talking in phases, pretty soon they're going to go, you know what the best diet is? Carnivore plus carbs. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're just eating a normal <laughs> diet. You know? And I can predict that that's going to happen with a lot of them. Well, I would probably say that if you are going to have carbs if that so i'm just looking at it from like a big picture right so if someone's diet is primarily going to come from protein and fat right and they're going to have a minimal amount of carbs they're probably better off having that minimal amount of carbs be from fruits because the antioxidants in the fruits will help to with cholesterol and things like that most people forget the antioxidants are really good with cholesterol too so if you're having a high fat intake from you know high uh, saturated fat in your food especially from the meat that you're eating you know, the antioxidants in the fruits are definitely going to help blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, yeah. all those things are good. So if you are going to have carbs, that's probably the best bet. But then again, what? Yeah. <laughs> it, it goes like, it kind of like. Exactly. Because then you start getting so close to just saying, okay, yeah. I just eat a normal diet. Yeah. Because, you know, like. Carnival so, plus rice. Right. So like my diet right vertical. now, my diet right now pretty much is you could, if I wanted to call, if I wanted to coin my diet and come up with some cool name and try to sell it, I would call my diet carnivore plus carbs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because 90% of my protein sources are coming from meat sources of protein, animal, animal sources of protein. And then I'm eating basically carb sources like potatoes and rice on top of it. Like that's 90% of what my diet is. And, you know, again, when you start getting that close to, to changing your diet plan, it's like, so I heard an analogy one time where they said, you know, you take an apple pie, and then when you make a new recipe and you say, now, you know what, we're going to swap the apples for blueberries, we're going to change the crust for another tr- crust, it's no longer an apple pie anymore, now it's a blueberry pie, right? right? So you can't even call it an apple pie anymore. So when you start doing things like this, taking a diet that's completely devoid of carbohydrates, now we're adding in fruit. Is it even a carnival diet anymore? Is it even a you know meat based diet? 
So, again, call it whatever you want, but at the end of the day, like I said, it, it's once you start changing things, it comes full circle after a while. And I, I guarantee some of these people are going to start just saying, okay, carnivore plus plus rice, carnivore plus potato. You said that. I'm kind of thinking, like, what what are the foods that I eat every day? So my diet, if I would have to give my diet a name, it's probably whey protein, chicken, mm -hmm. oatmeal, and Oreos. That's, and Oreos. that's, that's, that's okay. my yeah. diet. Yeah, yeah. That's my so diet. So you got carnivore plus Oreos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, carnivores don't eat uh, chicken. It's like the insuperior meat. Right. Isn't it right? So we'll call it the poverty carnivore diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my, that's my yeah, plan. That's yeah. my plan. It's so funny. Whenever I diet, I don't eat those things regularly, but like when I diet, I, like, I always want room for like a little bit of something like that. Every day I've been, yeah. it just fits into my macros. Yeah. It just happens. I'm like, ah, three Oreos, 25 grams of carbs, seven yeah. fat. Perfect. That's yeah. what I have left for the day. And that's it. But it's like, I've been doing it every day. So I'm like, damn, I've been eating Oreos every day. Yeah, so that those three Oreos, they don't make you bingey. You know, they don't make you eat the I know, whole know, box of Oreos because you had three. People say that all the time, and it's like, yeah. I'm actually, like, it's funny because yesterday I, I went for them, and I had them, I'm like, Ugh, I don't want these, but it fits, and I don't feel like looking for something else to make it fit. Yeah. So that's what I just ate. Yeah. But yeah, I was thinking about that. Like, Damn, I eat a, I mean, eating a lot of Oreos. Because it's in the house, the kids and whatever, but I'm like, but some people are like, oh, I can't stop at three. No. And I get that. Listen, it happens, but yeah. you just got to be more... You just gotta have the willpower to do it. You can do anything you want. Like, look, if the doctor told you, and I'm gonna just use this as an yeah. example for you, but if the doctor told you, Pete, you cannot lift weights anymore, uh, I would find a way to lift weights. <laughs> but if, but my point is, if the doctor like scared your shit out of you yeah. and said, listen, you can't, like, you just can't do this anymore. You know, if you're I, gonna try to, you're gonna be like, okay, I have no choice. Yeah, at this if point. I, if I, yeah, if I knew that, you know, if I was gonna die because I was gonna lift weights, I'd yeah. stop. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. not that that's not true. Yeah, I don't want to make it really true, but I'm trying to go. I'm trying to give you a drastic examples yeah. for you yeah. to say like, you know. But it's like for certain people, it's like, you know, the best is the thing that makes me laugh the most is when people get gastric bypass. They have to uh, lose weight before they get gastric bypass. Know, I'm like, what? Crazy. And then the yeah. best part about it when people get gastric bypass, how many of them gain weight after? Oh yeah, it's, I don't know what the percentage is, but the statistics on it, but I'm sure it's a very high percentage. Just from people I've met and people I've heard of and I, and I know. Majority of them that I hear, I, I almost never hear. Yeah, I got gastric uh, bypass and it was it was great. I hear a lot of people say, yeah, you know, I lost weight and then I gained it back. You know, yeah. and that's crazy to put your body through that just to gain that weight back. Yeah. Well, but that's because they never learned the habits in the beginning to do it. Of course, it's almost impossible to just change your lifestyle just you know just because you have a surgery. You're not mentally going to change your lifestyle like that. You have to be prepared even before you go in there. I heard something yesterday, and, and again, most of you guys know I have. I have facilities and I train, you know, the average person and uh, we also have online clients as well. And, you know, one of the things that really help people is you're really supposed to give somebody one habit to work on for six weeks. And then once they master that habit, have them do another habit on top of that habit. And that's technically how, you know, you make lifelong change by giving them habits and then stacking those habits on top of them. But problem is too many people want it now. And how can I tell someone for six weeks, like, Mrs. Jones, we want you to lose as much weight as possible. The only thing you're going to do right now is just focus on just eating more protein. Right. That's it. Nothing else. Don't count. Don't nothing. They're not going to get results no. like that. So it's like, it's always a catch 22. And while I agree, that is probably the best way to do it. You know, have someone start walking. Don't right. do anything else. Just start yeah. walking. Take 10,000 steps every day. They would start losing weight. Yeah. But. Yeah. At the same time, people have no patience to stick through something like no, that. That's the thing. It's patience. Yeah. And, and it's patience and the fact that everyone's, you know, groomed ahead of time to think that results come instantly, especially in fitness. Oh, man. You know, it's so the worst. You can't, you can't, you know, people are brainwashed coming in assuming, okay, I'm going to join the gym. I got 30 pounds to lose by summer. I want to try to lose it in a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. People assume that that's realistic and that's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to start ranting now, man, because I can't take that. Yeah. I mean, I deal with it all the time. Yeah. And... The best is, dude, everybody's a nutritionist, everybody knows everything, and it just blows my mind. It's like, then if you if you know all this, right, what's going yeah. on? Why, 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 why are you here? here? Yeah. Why are you here? You know all this. Why are you here? Well, the best is when people tell us, like, no, I don't need help with the nutrition. I just, right. I just need to be working out. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's unfortunate because a lot of people just want to rationalize why they're doing something or why they're not doing something. So a lot of times people will rationalize, well, I'm not losing weight because I'm not exercising. But you know, they won't say it's because of their diet. So they so they justify it and say, no, I don't need help with the diet as long as I weight train. You know, some people think, okay, as long as I add exercise, you know, I'm gonna lose weight. You know, and, I, and that's, 
depends on what your diet looks like, but in most cases, if your diet is that bad that you're here in the first place, just adding the weight training in, it's only going to do so much. You know, the diet is going to take you to the next level. No matter who's listening to this right now, yeah. whether they're a bodybuilder, a general pop person, you know, anyone listening to this right now, yeah. there are three elements that you need in order to change your physique. You have to have all three of them in place. One, your fitness. You have to be exercising. Mm-hmm. You have to be weight training. We've talked about this a thousand times. You have to be weight training, lifting weights with progression, doing more every single time, and challenging your body. Second thing is you have to have your nutrition on point. Flexible dieting is probably the best way to do it, tracking your macros, doing that consistently. And the third pillar is going to be your accountability and having mm-hmm. someone to be accountable to. That's really what's going to be the three things that's going to change your physique, no matter who's listening to this. So if you're a bodybuilder, what could be that accountability for you? Because everybody knows how to train if they're a bodybuilder. Yeah. Everybody knows how to eat, but you need something to keep you accountable to keep yeah. you to do it. So yeah. what's that end goal in sight? Maybe you do a contest. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you, you set a deadline for whatever event or whatever it is. But having that looming thing in the background is oh, going to yeah. make things work a little easier. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for most of the guys that I work with, you know, a lot of them are more focused on building muscle. So, you know, we've talked about this so many times. Building muscle is like the slowest process in anything in fitness, especially the longer you've been doing it. You know, like at our stage, we're talking about like waiting a year or two years to even measure any type of muscle gain. And that's one of the hardest things for people to stay motivated with when you can't see the results. And you have to understand going into it that, okay, you know what, even if I want to get 1% better, it's going to take me another year, maybe even two years. And you have to set yourself up mentally for that before you even get involved with it. Because a lot of people just say, okay, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to try to build muscle. We're going in there already assuming, okay, nothing's even going to happen for another year. I have to go in every single day. I have to train hard every single day. I have to follow my diet. I have to follow everything to a T. And in, you know, 365 days, I might be able to measure on the scale one or two more pounds of muscle at this point. You know, know, if you think about it, that's really what it boils down to. And literally, if you slack off for half of that, you might be able to, you know, you might at the end of it make zero progress, you know? So that line gets thinner the longer you do this and the better your physique gets the, the, the line gets thinner where there's any margin for error that, that even could be allowed you know at this point if you decide to take three months off the gym out of the whole year you're talking about the difference between an entire year making no progress versus making all your progress you know if somebody who's brand new to the gym they could get away with that but again it's, it's all about understanding what the, what the what a realistic expectation is you know, and at this point, we have to understand where we're going. Somebody new to the gym, we can say realistically, okay, you want to add 10 pounds of muscle. We could probably do that in a couple months. We just got to get you training hard, eating your protein. You know, somebody losing weight, when they come in and they say, okay, I want to, you know, cut 20 pounds of body fat. Okay, but we're going to do this at a rate where we're losing maybe one, two pounds a week. You know, so it's all about the expectation up front and understanding how long it's going to take. And the more advanced you are, the, the slower it should be. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately. Yeah. Absolutely. I think we, we kind of hit on, the, well, me and you have talked privately yeah. about this. But I think one of the things that we hit on that I think is ideal for, for where we are, and I'm going to give yeah. you guys the numbers for where we are. You know, we're both pretty much the same weight, you know, a couple pounds yeah. off here and there. But, yeah. you know, we said that the best thing for us to do is to stay within a range. Mm-hmm. So, you know, between 190 and 200 is the range. Let's just say that's the range, right? So we diet to 190, you know, slowly reverse diet and kind of bulk till 200. And then diet down to 190 again. And just kind of constantly staying between that range yeah. throughout the year. But it makes it a lot easier doing it that way. Because then, realistically, we could diet a little bit harder and get to that, get the diet over with quick. And then reverse diet, go the other way. And usually when you reverse diet, it takes a lot longer to put that weight back on than it does for it to come off. Yeah. But I think that that's the best way to do it. You have to find that range for you because every person's built differently. Their numbers yeah. may be different. You know, maybe for you it's 175 to 180, 185. And I think that 10 pound swing is enough. You have to find that range yeah. where your body fat, you feel uncomfortable, like you're at that tipping. So for me at 200, I feel like that range at like 200, 205 max, anything over that. And then it starts to like, my body fat gets like too much. Like I can't, I don't like the way I look after that. So then I know I have to die it down. So you have to find that range for you. Let's say that range for whoever's listening to this is uh, 150. You know, it's a woman listening to this is 150. Well, if you feel uncomfortable at 150, and diet down to 140, if that's where you feel lean and good, then maybe you make the range 140 to 150, and then you kind of stay within that range. Once you're a little more advanced, I think that that's like ideal. Yeah, and that's something that I always try to promote with, with a lot of guys too that have trouble gaining muscle over time too and, and, and improving their body composition because a lot of them, so we're talking about a range of about 10 pounds. A lot of people have a range that's much bigger than that that they kind of cycle through. You'll talk to somebody at one point in the year, you know, they're 180 pounds, Later in the year, they're 220 pounds, 230. 
you know? And if you can change, fluctuate your body back and forth that much, you can bet that the quality of weight you're gaining and losing is not going to be quality. Yeah, agree. You know? So the tighter you can make that, the, the cleaner everything is going to be. And when I say cleaner, like, you know, the better quality muscle you're going to put on when you gain that weight, the better amount of, the, mo- the majority of what you lose during a fat loss phase is going to be actual fat loss and not muscle, you know, not lean mass and things like that. So again, that's a little bit more advanced. And, that, and so guys that are really looking to maximize their physique, you need to kind of keep it a lot more tight than, than somebody just starting yeah. out. But in general, everybody's going to have that range because, you know, a lot of people just say, oh, my, my, my best weight is 200 pounds or my best weight is 150 pounds, whatever it is. It might be true, but you likely have a range where if you're a little bit higher than that, you're going to build muscle a little bit better. You're going to feel better. Your body is going to be more comfortable sitting with a slightly higher body fat. Then when you get below that range, you're probably going to look your best because you're the leanest. You're not necessarily going to have the best performance in the gym. You're probably not building any muscle at that point. But again, that's where your physique might look the best. So in order for you to get better, going a little bit higher for a short period of time, maybe even an extended period of time, is what's going to get you to continue making progress at that point. So you can't sit at the same body fat percentage or the same weight you know, you know, indefinitely unless you're just maintaining your physique. And, you know, I still think at that point there should be a, a bit of a range, but it would just be tighter. Yeah, we talked about that in the last episode. You guys can go back and listen to that yeah. one where you should be sprinting sometimes and then taking your exactly. as yes others, and that's a perfect example of that. But how this relates back to what we were talking about with carbs is that the only thing that would basically change between my 200 weight and my 190 weight mm-hmm. is basically going to be my carb and my fat yeah. intake. My fat intake goes up, my carb intake goes up when I want to get a little heavier, and then when I want to drop it down, they, mm-hmm. those two things drop off. But it doesn't, I never just say, okay, it's time to go to 190 and I'm cutting my carbs down to zero. Right. That doesn't happen. I mean, I think I'm dieting right now on like 280 carbs, something like that, 300 carbs. A lot of bodybuilders still do that, man. And that's like their approach to dieting. Okay, I'm dieting now, cut all the carbs out. That's, yeah, that's, that's what they can do. And they just, and again, that's going to be the thing that's going to take you from your body composition now to losing weight and it not all be quality weight. Because again, you're going to need those carbs at least a certain amount. And the amount's going to be different for everybody to maintain your training intensity, to maintain your muscle mass, to maintain your metabolic rate. Because when you start removing those carbs, your your metabolic rate is going to slow down much quicker than if you keep your carbs in and just lower your energy, your energy intake. So that's the thing a lot of people don't realize too is carbs are metabolically stimulating too. And a lot of people don't talk about that, you know. When you increase your fat intake, it doesn't really do much to boost hormones like leptin, you know, things that are going to help you burn more body fat. When you're dieting and you give somebody carbs, all those hormones are going to increase, you know, and those are good things to help you burn fat. It's a good thing to help you boost your metabolism. So when I talk about with people trying to maximize their metabolism, so when I say, listen, you know, because I get a lot of guys that come to me and they say, listen, I want to compete in a year. I want to go through a dieting phase next year, but I want to just maximize my, my gaining phase right now. I always look at the diet and I say, okay, the main thing that we could do if you're not already doing it is we're going to bring those calories as high as possible so that we can get the metabolism as high as possible. And I try to get carbs as high as possible because, again, if you're taking a high-calorie diet that's high in carbohydrates, that's going to get your metabolism as fast as possible. Then when you go to diet, now you're starting from a, you know, a high base of calories and a very fast metabolic rate. Once you start removing those carbs, a lot of times we can even lower them to a point where they were at where they were before, or even a little bit more, and they're burning body fat, whereas before they were just maintaining. Yeah, most people forget that too, and like you mentioned, you know, leptin, no one's, I haven't heard anyone talking about that lately, but you know, leptin is one of those key hormones in fat burning, so that's why it's important. But remember, the other thing too is, our bodies primarily run on glucose. Yeah. So even if you overdo it on carbs and fats, your body's gonna turn those into sugar, into glucose mm-hmm. in your body for your body to use. So why not just give your body actually what it needs? Because remember, the more full of muscle is, the more your body is actually going to say, okay, I need to maintain this muscle. Whereas if you just took all of it out, your muscle is going to get depleted and you're just not going to, you're going to have like a different look to your body. Mm -hmm. I'd say like your body definitely becomes way more flat Absolutely. and it doesn't have like that pop. Like even these carnivore guys, if you look at all their bodies, it's the same. Everything's kind of like, it's kind of sagging. Like they look great. Some of them are in really good shape. They're lean, but... Again, it's like their body's like kind of sag and, you know, and again, people will say, well, I don't feel good when I eat carbs, but it's just because you haven't built up a tolerance to them. Once you build up your ability, your body's ability to handle more and more carbs, you're going to feel a lot better. You're going to look a lot better. And the problem is, again, people, the, the road is always in the middle. People just 
They go from zero carbs yes. to every carb. Yeah. Right. That's the problem. They go yeah, from zero to everything. Mm -hmm. So, but if you, you know, if we took one of those guys and we said, okay, we're going to start your carb intake on 20 grams a day. Right. And then every week we added five grams, mm -hmm. you know, two weeks. Now they're 10 to 30 grams. They're not going to yeah. notice it. 40 grams, right. 50 grams, you know, you're getting there soon. You're going to be taking a hundred. That's still really low, but now that they've 10, five X their right. carb intake. Right. Their body's going to start utilizing that a little bit better. And over time, doing that is going to yield better results. So, again, I think that the, where all this dogma is coming from is, again, zero to everything. Right. And that's the problem. Yeah, and a great example of what you just brought up, too, is um, a lot of people that are, that are involved in the keto scene or the probably carnivore, not so much, but more keto, and more so in the bodybuilding scene, have probably heard at one point of the anabolic diet. And there's a lot of people that promote diets today where they call it the anabolic diet, but I'm talking about the original anabolic diet, which I believe it was Mario Di Pas Pasquale was the one who created it. And the whole you idea, told me about that years ago. Yeah, it's been around. It's an old, it's an old diet, you know. And I think it was around. It was popular, I think, in the '90s. And the whole idea behind that diet was he basically took. This is when like the Atkins diet was big. He basically took that idea, but he said, how could we apply it to bodybuilders? And the whole philosophy behind it was if we give them a high-fat diet, high-protein, wow. or moderate-protein, high-fat diet, we can maximize their, their anabolic hormones. So, like, if guys didn't want to go on steroids, the idea was if you give them enough fat, the testosterone levels would be higher. You know, obviously, over time, that, that, that whole idea kind of faded a little bit because there's only so much you could, you could do through nutrition. So, just adding tons of fat is not necessarily the best way to go about it. But, anyway, the idea was, you know, Put them on a, a you know a moderate protein diet, high in fat, basically a, a modified keto diet. You know the goal wasn't necessarily to be burning ketones for fat, but the point was we're going to remove carbs or at least I think the, the max was 25 grams, and then make up your calories in protein and fat. The idea was you're more likely to you know burn more body fat and build more muscle, and you could increase your calories without getting fat. Some people had a small amount of success with the diet. Again, it's basically a modified ketogenic diet, but over time. What he did was he eventually came around and he, he said, you know, how can we improve this diet? And what he did was, I believe the name was, he, he switched it from the anabolic diet to the... Anabolic diet plus carbs? It's basically what it was. <laughs> but regardless of what the name was, I think it was like the optimized diet. I really can't remember the name. I'm sure somebody knows the name. But basically he said, how do we make this diet better? And, you know, a lot of bodybuilders still swore by it because, you know, in bodybuilding culture, some people just swear by keto. It doesn't matter what type of results they get. Just for whatever reason, they have to follow keto. But he said, how do we make it better? And what he did was he took the same framework, but he slowly added carbs to it. And his whole idea was, okay, I told you before you're eating, I think it was like a one to one and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight. And I think maybe like a gram of fat per pound of body weight, something like that. That was the starting range. And then 25 grams of carbs or less. And then he said in the new diet, we're going to slowly add carbs. And I think he said start with like 50, then go to 75, then go up to like 100. And then whatever it was, you're going to keep that same diet, but you're going to add carbs in to the point where you find if I have any more, now it's going to cause me to start gaining body fat. Now I'm going to have to, I'm going to start having issues with, you know, my body retaining water and all the other things that people say are, are negatives to eating carbohydrates. And the whole goal was he wanted you to keep that base amount of protein and fat, but then add in the calories from carbs till you get to your threshold. And I don't really see a problem with that at all. You know, like I, what I said in the beginning. Yeah, and that was a that was a guy that like swore up and down about keto. He was literally trying to change the way bodybuilders were dieting back then. You know, but eventually he came around and he said, "Okay, I'm not a hundred percent pro carb, meaning I don't think you should just get rid of the fats and add only carbs in." But I do see a, definitely a benefit to having carbs in there. Find out what the amount is for you, and he didn't give a blanket statement like saying, "Okay, now the new diet is okay, a hundred grams of carbs is ideal." Find out the amount that you could tolerate, and then don't eat any more. Only eat more protein and fat at that point. Yeah. Well, it's also the same people who are also talk about, like, can't have carbs, don't eat carbs, yeah. carbs are what's making you fat, are the same people who have cheat meals. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. A cheat meal ruins a whole week worth of progress. Yeah. One meal can negate a whole week of good progress. And people forget that. Yeah. And cheat meals are, again, the worst. And what's going to happen, of course, if you're having no carbs, you have a big cheat meal, what's going to happen? You're going to feel lethargic, right, you're going to feel, feel worse, tired, yeah. you're going to be bloated, you're going to feel like crap. And then you're just more, in your mind, you're like, well, it's, it's from the carbs. Right. But the funny thing is, and I see this all the time, too. Again, I see people's nutrition. I've probably looked at 
thousands of people's meal plans, like thousands, at the, at probably hundreds of thousands at this point. And the thing that makes me laugh the most is everybody's like, ah, oh, the pasta, the breads, all that stuff. If yeah. you actually take like their normal diet and add up how many calories they're eating and pastas, breads, and this, it's way less than the other fats that right. they're eating that they don't right. even think are the foods, yeah. but they're demonizing those foods. Yeah. Like I get very, very lean eating bread. Right. Yeah, bread too. is one of the best foods for me that I eat. Like I, I digest it well, yeah. it works well with my body. Mm -hmm. but, like the opposite for me, when I have potatoes, I feel very, like, my body doesn't absorb potatoes well, for whatever reason. Yeah. Rice is fine, just potatoes, no. So if I went by that dogma, then, right. the, the, you know, then that doesn't yeah. make sense. That, should, that shouldn't be work. Right, yeah, and that, that's, like, again, why I like, to talk, I like to talk about this when I say that, you know, I don't like to say the word flexible dieting because people assume that when you say Pop flexible dieting, they just assume Pop-Tarts and, and whatever, anything goes. You know, and again, if you're talking about energy balance, sure, you can fit pop tarts in, and and, and, you, and as long as your energy balance is in check, you're going to either lose weight or gain weight if you if you have positive energy balance. But the the point I'm trying to make is, it gets way more nuanced than that when we're talking about optimizing everything. So you know, in your case, if we said you're going to do you know a flexible dieting approach, but you're going to have potatoes in it, that's not going to be the, the same as you having a flexible dieting approach with potatoes not included, and you have carb sources that work better with your body. Because if you're walking around bloated, you have digestion issues, again, especially, again, if you're trying to build muscle, you have to be able to eat. If you're eating all these foods that don't agree with your body, yeah. you're going to have more trouble eating food and you're not going to gain the, the, the proper weight that you are. Same thing when you're losing weight, you know? If, a great example with, with a lot of people is, you know, you hear it all the time, I'm sure, oh, it's too much protein, I can't eat that, right? But what else are you eating in your diet that's causing you digestive issues where you can't get more protein in? You know, if, you're, if your digestion is spot on and you're hungry... Protein's gonna you know you're gonna be able to digest protein pretty good, but if you're eating a ton of junk in your diet on top of it, you're gonna have trouble getting in the protein which you need to build muscle and burn fat. So we need to coin a nutrition term, man. So we're not going with flexible dieting. What are we coining it? I don't know. I gotta come up with a name though because yeah. I don't I don't like literally people ask me all the time like what's your approach to dieting? What do you think about this? I don't like to use the word flexible dieting. I don't like to use the word I I F Y M because people took that word and name to the extreme. But yeah, I agree. I, I agree that. You know, when people talk about, like, clean foods, I agree that clean foods are probably the best foods that should be in your diet, but you don't have to eat something because it's clean, and you also don't have to exclude something because it's not clean. But the majority of your diet should absolutely be from good quality, whole sources of food. But what what's a good source of food for you might not be for me. Like, like brown rice is, like, one of those where... And I hate this. You go to a healthy place, like, a place that serves healthy food, and they'll serve chicken and rice, but it's always brown rice. And I'm like, can I have white rice? Like, no, we don't serve that here. This yeah. is clean eating. Get out of here, you. Yeah. And I, get and out of like, here, you. And I'm like, I can't eat the brown rice because my body doesn't, I literally get indigestion from even like a small serving of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Old rice, I'm yeah. fine with. Brown rice, white rice, yeah. doesn't matter to me. I'm fine with that. But potatoes, dude, mm -hmm. like, sweet potatoes especially, sticks. Like, yeah. I feel it so much with sweet potatoes. Regular potatoes, no. Sweet, I don't know what it is. It's just interesting. All yeah, fruits I'm, I'm good with, with, all fruits I'm good with, it's just weird. It doesn't make any sense. And like bagels, I'm fine with. Yeah, any bread, I'm fine <laughs> yeah. with at all. Bread is, is probably the easiest carb for me to digest and absorb. I've, I've never had any type of issue with, with bread. Yeah, no. I like bread because it doesn't bother me. It's easy yeah. to eat. I think it's sustained, like, keeps you kind of full. Oh, absolutely. I a nice, I feel a nice chicken bread. sandwich goes a long it way, does. man. It really does. <laughs> it really, it really, does. really does. All right, guys. So let's kind of summarize this, Pete, for everybody. So don't eat your carbs, they tell you. That's going to make you fat. Mm -hmm. Don't touch the carbs that is a big false everybody's different but carbohydrates are needed especially when you're training especially when you're trying to lose as much body fat you know like pete said you know when you have your carb intake your fat burning hormones are going to be high people don't talk about this either but your metabolism is at its fastest when you're mm -hmm. overeating and Absolutely. typically that's because you're overeating carbs so yeah. it's from the carbs. So you yeah. need to keep carbs in your diet as much as you can. And I would probably say that you should probably hold off on cutting out all your carbs. Yeah. You're going to have to cut your calories. But you're going to have to hold back on some of those carbs. Try to keep them as high as possible. And in fact, with some athletes and some you know competitors that we've worked with in the past, we've actually cut protein before we've cut carbs. Yeah, there's a case to actually cut protein. There yeah. is. And so, again, again, you want to keep it to a certain a certain amount, but there's a case where, where you'd be better off cutting protein than cutting carbs, absolutely. And I'm going to say one more thing. For those skinny guys, I'm a former skinny guy, so I can say it too. 
one of the biggest macronutrients you should be consuming is going to be your carb intake. And keeping yeah. your protein lower is going to help you get more carbs and more fat mm-hmm. in. So Agreed. if you're a, if you're a hard gainer, I'm bringing yeah. that back. If yeah, you're a hard, yeah, gainer, a hard gainer and you're secret. looking to gain some yeah. muscle, eat that protein intake at bay, at low. Yeah. And uh, just pound away at those carbs and those fats and you'll yeah. blow up. Yeah, and I mean, these are all great examples of why it's context dependent and it's going to be different for everybody. So there, there, you should never follow a blanket statement. And carbs is just one tool in the toolbox of nutrition. You know, and there's no reason to just say, I'm not bringing that tool with me to the job. You know, you just have to use it at the right time and you have to use it in the right amount. So that's yeah. really what it comes down to. Agreed. All right, guys, getstrongnow.com, oldschoolmanscaping.com. Go click below. Do everything, like, comment, leave us a five-star review. And Pete and Anthony, New York Muscle Radio, and we're out.